When you first start using Azure SQL Database, you will have quickly noticed that there is no SQL agent within your Azure SQL Server. You must remember that Azure SQL Database is an example of platform as a service or database as a service. All that is being offered to you is somewhere to place your tables, your procedures and your data. However, there are a number of ways that we can automate tasks within an Azure SQL Database. And this is what we're going to look at in this video. I'm going to explain to you four different ways of running automated tasks against your Azure SQL database. And these are going to be using the on-premises SQL agent, Azure automation, Azure web jobs, and the Azure scheduler job collection. So here we are in SQL Server Management Studio, and I'm connected to my Azure SQL Server called QEDZ and on here I have a database called AdventureWorks. Within the programmability and store procedures I have a store procedure called select top 50 persons which simply selects the top 50 records from the persons table and this is the store procedure that we are going to use for all the demos. As we can see, there is no agent attached to the Azure SQL Server, but we could use our local SQL Server and its SQL agent to run jobs on our Azure SQL database. So here is my local SQL Server running here. What I have done is create a link server to my Azure SQL database. I'm not going to go through the details of how to create the link server. That is covered in another video on my YouTube channel. But the most important option that we must check to be able to run store procedures on the remote server is under server options and it's this one called rpc out equals true and that is enabled so that is what we want so if i load up one of my queries we can now run a query against the adventureworks database in sql azure and that will run with no trouble at all and we could simply create an agent job in our SQL Server agent. So if you're looking for a simple way of scheduling tasks and want to use something that you're used to and comfortable with, this is certainly one way of creating scheduled tasks against your Azure SQL database. So let's go over to the Azure portal and see what options there are available within Microsoft Azure. So here I am in my Azure portal. Here is my dashboard. And if we look down the left hand side, we can see something called automation accounts. Automation accounts are definitely the best way for running automated and scheduled jobs against your Azure SQL database. In fact, you can use automation to do just about anything you like within an Azure system. So I have several automation accounts running. This one here is actually an automation account that goes and shuts down all my virtual servers in the evening because when I'm asleep, I don't need them running. So it will shut them down at 10 o'clock in the evening and restart them at 8 o'clock in the morning and thus saving me money on my Azure subscription. But the one that we're going to look at today is this agent account called Agent2. There's very little information to configure on an automation account, just what its name is, the resource group, and which location or region you would like to put it in. So let's click on Agent 2. So this is the automation account screen. We are going to be looking at runbooks. Now runbooks are PowerShell modules that can be used to run virtually any task against any service within Microsoft Azure. Now Microsoft have a gallery available of runbooks that you can use as examples to get you going. So here are examples to stop Azure virtual machines, a hello world, good old hello world example. And if I type in SQL up here and hit return, then we can filter down to some of the runbooks available for SQL Server. So here's one that explains how to run an Azure command in a runbook how to scale a runbook, how to back up SQL databases automatically to your blob storage, 
how to restore to a copy of the database. Everything you could ever want to do, there are examples here that you can take. Some are Microsoft created, a lot, a lot of them have been created by user community. And you can use these examples from the gallery to give you a head start in creating your own runbook. Now before we look at our PowerShell runbook, one thing that we will need to do is create a credential that will allow us to log in. And the credential is a, a login and a, is a username and a password that our PowerShell runbook can use to connect to our Azure SQL database. And being a PowerShell credential, it is secure and doesn't appear in any of the logs when we are running our runbook. So I've already created one using my Postly DM account and hidden the password in there. So if we come back to our runbook, I have a runbook already created. So I'm going to click on this one. And here we can edit our runbook. So to show you what a PowerShell workflow runbook will look like, very importantly that your workflow statement, that the name of your runbook matches the name that you gave it in the portal. So here we are, we're specifying the SQL Server, the database, and the procedure I want to run. Here you can see I am pulling the credential from the credentials list, extracting the username and password, and then standard PowerShell commands here to connect to our Azure SQL database, open a connection, run our procedure, and pull our data back and display it on the screen. So we can test it from here using our testing pane to ensure that it works. So we can click on start. And there it's completed and returned all the data we expected. So we've tested our runbook. We know that it works successfully. So now we can come back to this screen and publish our runbook and make it live. And this will override the previous version of the runbook. Once we have published our runbook, we can now schedule it, decide when we want to run this runbook. Our schedules are shared within your Azure system. So I can now create a new schedule. Then we need to give the schedule a name. So let's call it once, once a day. We can obviously add a description in. We can decide when it's going to start. So here we have the date and time for it to start. Obviously, I'm in England, so we'll use UK time. And we can decide if we want to have it a one-off run or if we want it to run regularly. So we could say recur once every hour, day, week, month. And we can set an expiration as well. So I can say run it once a day to finish tomorrow. Once we've set our schedule up, click create. That will create a schedule. That's a shared schedule that we could use for other run books. Click OK. So it is now scheduled and ready to run. We can run it directly from here if we wish. And once it's finished running, we can view the logs. So we can see that it was successful. And if we click on jobs, so that every time that runbook is run, it will add a list to the job list here so we can see when it ran and whether it was successful or not. And this is the main screen for our automation account and now we can see that it is run once it was completed successfully. So automation accounts is definitely the way I would recommend if you wish to automate any task within Microsoft Azure. It's very easy to use. It uses PowerShell which we're all becoming more familiar with. You can edit and change your scripts and you can monitor them from here so it's a very handy way of doing it. As well as automation accounts there are two other ways that I have found for automating tasks within Microsoft Azure. And the first one I'm going to look at is actually under App Services. 
Now App Services is where you would create your websites and mobile applications. And here I have a mobile application that I've already created called Mobile Schedule 1. And inside the mobile application, even if you don't build the website or build any of the mobile app to go with it, we do have an option called Web Jobs. And if I click on Web Jobs, this allows us to create a scheduled task. And the Web Job supports more than just PowerShell. And to create a Web Job, we simply click on Add. We need to give our Web Job a name. So let me call it select top 50. And in this case, we need to upload a file that we have already created. Now, this could be a PowerShell file. It could be a .NET compiled application that we wish to load. It could be a Node.js file. So we have a lot more choice than we've had previously. So I am going to load up a PowerShell script that I've already created called slot select top 10 PS. Now I have a choice. Do I wish to have that running continuously so it just carries on running forever or do I wish to trigger it so that I can schedule it? Now in this particular case, if we wish to trigger it using a schedule, we have to supply a cron expression. Now if you've never heard of cron, it's a scheduling tool that comes with Unix. And in here we would need to type in a list of numbers that explain how the schedule is going to work. I'm not going to talk about cron here. If you want to know more about what a cron expression would look like, then please go and search for it on the internet. There are plenty of web pages that explain how cron works. But I am going to leave it in manual mode and then I'm going to click OK. So let me refresh the screen. And here is my new web job waiting to run. So if I select it, I can now run that web job. And there we are. The job has now completed. One of the nice things about a web job is that the log can be viewed as a web page, which means if you are running scheduled tasks here, People with access to the web page can see the results. They don't need to log into Microsoft Azure to find the logs. They can just use this web page. And if we click on the details, we can see here that it has returned all the data as we expect. There are a number of disadvantages of web jobs. First of all, you can't reconfigure it. Once you have built a web job, you can't change the schedule. You can't even get to the code to see what you wrote. So if you lose the source, there is no way that I have found of actually seeing the code. If we click on properties, we'll see all we get is the information about it, but we can't actually change anything. And this is one of the, the major limitations. There's a couple of other things that you need to be aware of if you're going to try using this which has caught me out quite nicely if we scroll down the screen to be able to use the web job we need to create a data connection which is pretty straightforward this is a data connection that i created earlier and it's called ms underscore table connection string and basically that is a, a, a standard connection string for using PowerShell or .NET to connect to a, a database. There's nothing difficult about that. At this level, the connection string is called MS underscore table connection string, but it doesn't go by that name when you run your PowerShell or your .NET code. If I show you the actual PowerShell script we run, you'll see that Azure has put this prefix in front of the connection string. And this catches a lot of people out, and it's caught me out recently. Previously, the prefix was simply SQL constring underscore and then your name, and now it is called SQL Azure constring. So, if you are going to use this web job, but be aware of the limitations that I have just mentioned. Finally, I want to mention an option called Scheduler Job Collection. 
And what the scheduler job collection allows you to do is schedule tasks against HTTP endpoints. So I have a job collection here called job collection one. And what I have is an ASP.NET website that is running. And one of the web pages in there, if you call that web page, the code behind that web page will connect to an Azure SQL Server and run code on that Azure SQL Server. So in this case, what I have is I have a scheduler job. So let's have a look at the one called Select Data. And if I click on Action Settings, you'll see here that I am calling an HTTP endpoint but it could be a storage queue or a service bus queue or a service bus topic but I'm just simply using a, a get statement to HTTP and here is the URL to that to a web page and if I call that web page with a particular parameter in this case it will select the top 50 rows from that table once I've configured that then I can apply a schedule to this particular task Again, we can specify it as a recurring or a one-off. So this one runs once a day and never stops. And once we have configured the schedule, then this can run as well. So this is slightly different and may not be so useful to a, a DBA. But if you are writing web pages, if you're not able to use automation accounts or you can't connect from on-premises servers, then this may be a way to get around that. One of the drawbacks I have hit with this particular way is if the, the SQL code takes a long time to run and the web page obviously takes a long time to run, then you can get timeout errors. It'll often report back that the job that you ran failed simply because the system timed out before it finished, even though once the SQL code has started running on that web page, it will carry on even if the web page times out. So that is one of the drawbacks that I have hit when I have tried setting up examples. I hope that is of use to you in understanding how you can automate tasks in an Azure SQL database. Please visit my YouTube channel to see more clips on using Microsoft Azure SQL databases and other SQL presentations. And you can download my free ebook from gethinellis.com. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope to see you later.